Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about food and what we actually feed our crickets and some of the things that you can feed your crickets. Um, we already have done a video in the past on the channel, it's called Food for Crickets. And we just go over a really basic, quick way um, of what we actually do to make our food and also where we get our food from. So you can go and watch that on the channel and you know, explains things in quite detail like going out and putting a crop in and you know, reaping the crop. But the main focus of this video is actually gonna be some slight changes that we're doing with our food processing and what we actually feed our crickets, but then also to touch on some questions as well from other people who are looking to farm crickets or even just have crickets at the house and what they can use to feed their crickets. So yeah, let's get into the video. First things first is just a quick little recap on what we actually do for food on the farm. We've just got our Kubota hooked up here to this miller. Um, we used to use this while well, my great grandpa actually used to use this when they used to have cattle on the farm here just to crack the grain. So obviously the cow doesn't just eat the grain and come out the other end, it can actually get digested. But this is what it kind of looks like at the end. Just here it's nice and crushed up. And the reason why we do this for our crickets is just so they can eat it a lot faster and they can eat a lot more. And then by that actually going ahead, they grow a lot faster and we feel like they just enjoy it a lot more. But as you can see just here, this is all our oats that we're gonna be mixing up today. And we also have barley and wheat that we will also be blending together. And these are the three major grains that we do use on the farm. See that just there? And once it's all mixed up or chopped up, then we put it into this cement mixer to then blend it all together. And then finally, that's what in the tubs for storage. We keep it our core room. So no more bacteria can grow on it. And we have it all sitting there ready to go. So we'll do a little process now just to show you guys the whole thing. Okay, now that you've seen our whole process, um, just a little quick reminder about what we actually do for blending up our grain and the type of grain that we also use to feed our crickets. Um, so now we're over the container and there is a little bit of a time skip because if you haven't noticed, I've been trying to grow a beard. <laughs> but there is one amazing sunset going on over there at the moment. But we will head inside these two containers that we're starting to fill up with crickets right now especially this one that one's coming along quite nicely well there will be a bit of an update on the channel soon about what's happening in there but because today we are talking about food and what we feed our crickets so we're just going to quickly wrap up what we do and then some of the things that we've tried and 
some of the more interesting side of things that we might be doing in the future. So let's head inside here and have a look. And probably because the humidity is up as well in this container, keeping them nice and happy with their growth. Just clear that off. So yeah, this is inside our first container that we got. We will, and we might head over to the other container as well, but we're pretty much for the food topic, we've got everything that we need here. And as you can see inside this bin just here, we have our grain mix, as well as, sorry guys, just gotta clean the lens off again, and our oranges. So these are fresh oranges today with some fresh food. And we make sure that we actually keep our food pretty neat. So on one of these full bins down here, where we've got lots of little crickets running over it, that will fill up with feces and all their food, like um, frass and their waste and their byproduct. So you do want to make sure that you recycle and get rid of that stuff. Um, they will try and eat it all down, but you just don't want to run into any bacteria problems. And that's one of the biggest things with crickets is bacteria and they will die over time if you do not clean these bins and keep it nice and tidy and clean off the lens again. One of those factors is just their frass being in the container and being on their food and then consuming the food and that over time you'll start to notice some defects with your crickets. It's not good. So making sure you're putting fresh grain in, getting rid of the old stuff if they haven't eaten at all and having no mold on your food like these fresh oranges here. Gotta get rid of them. So <clears throat> that is what we're sticking with. And like I said before earlier, oats, wheat, barley, all comes from the farm, all grown locally here that we're feeding our crickets with and we're growing with. So it's a nice big circular system that we have going here on the farm with our food, which is, yeah, it's awesome. Now, of course, with food, crickets also need water. They are really, really good at not using any water. Uh, there's a couple little research papers that have been in previous videos around the actual usage of water that the crickets do uh, take in and it's next to nothing like a kilo, or sorry, two liters of water to make a kilo of body weight. It's phenomenal stuff. So we do have water feeders in the container to help their food system. You can see all the crickets just laying here. A couple of them eating, a couple of my oranges just there. Get a little close up for you so you just see them picking away and chewing through it. And on top of the oranges as well. Now, don't be surprised, but there's probably about 5,000 crickets in this tub right here. Can't see them all because I'm making a bit of noise and they're hiding at the moment. But the thing I want to talk about is the water feeders. So you can see, uh, we've got a video on the channel already about making these water feeders and you can go check that out. But um, over time, with the oven rope, they will eventually start to chew through it. So this water feeder is on its last legs. Uh, you don't have to top up the water feeders that often. We filled this up today. You can see the table tennis ball just there. But the water, we might only fill it up once every couple of weeks. So they're really, really good at using next to no water. And a lot of that water is probably evaporated into the current environment in here, which is why it's so humid and the reason why the lens was fogging up before. But yeah, really, really important just to keep on top of the water so they do have something to drink. But between the hydration with the oranges, especially when they're pinheads, they can get a lot of moisture out of the oranges. But then the food, that little system there, these three things um, is what we've found works really, really well with our crickets. Like you look how happy these things are. You look how big they are too. It is incredible. Some of the growth that you, uh, you do get to see with my camera will focus <laughs> on the farm with these guys. So yeah, those three things, keep on top of them. And yeah, there will be a bit of mold or a bit of frass and waste. If I head down to this one just here, this one's been in for a little bit longer. You can just see all the feces sitting around the top of that water feeder. Now we're gonna have to clean this off next time we come in here, but that is super important. Gotta get rid of that. Keep the mold and keep the frass and keep the bins as clean as possible. Else you're just gonna start seeing your population slowly, slowly die off and you're gonna be questioning why 
are my crickets dying. The food, the water, how clean the bins are, unbelievably important. So definitely keep on top of that. And then you can see this water feeder here. It's only been in, about, in for about a week with these guys because they do need to get to a certain size where they can drink out of the oven rope, as you can see on the top there. But yeah, no frass around there. This bin is super tidy, super clean. Got plenty of fresh fruit and food there. And those guys will be ready to go for a happy life. And that is our food system. Okay, so that's the food and water that we use on the farm and I'll put up a list that either goes like here or here on the screen of everything that we have tried. And um, now a lot of this stuff does work. Like a lot of the fruit that you can see on here and the grains, um, it all does work. It just doesn't work as well as what we're using in here. And then with that being said, um, if you do want to try something that maybe isn't on this list, just go ahead and do it. But what I would recommend if you do try different foods to feed your crickets, just make sure that you have it in a separate bin to all your other crickets. So if something does go wrong, then you can isolate it and keep, a, keep just a bit more control over what actually happens with food for your crickets. So um, I will touch on the oranges though. So the reason why we do use oranges as well, and there are a lot of things that do have vitamin C in them is because, well, sorry, the reason why we use oranges is because it has vitamin C in it. And vitamin C is super, super important for developing their exoskeleton. So these oranges have only been in here for the day. And you can already see that guy is already taking a huge chunk out of his orange. And especially in the early stages with the young crickets, so down this end, um, when they're starting to develop their exoskeleton and they're going through their multiple periods where they have to grow a new exoskeleton, this vitamin C provides that support. So I think that's just one of the areas people go wrong with breeding crickets, um, while they see like a really high death rate uh, within their farms. So yeah, just make sure you keep on top of what you're actually feeding them. The grain is really, really good for just getting bulk food into them. And the reason why we use grain is because one, we have a lot of it, but two is also, if they don't have enough food in their container, they'll just start to eat each other. So by having heaps of food in the container at all times and keeping that food fresh for them, they'll be less likely to eat each other. And that's where we've found a huge benefit and in terms of their growth rate as well, having bulk food for them just to chew down on all the time with the oranges and the grain, we are having a lot of success with the crickets. So, yeah. Okay, the last topic that I wanted to talk about was gut loading. If you haven't heard of gut loading, it's pretty much where you feed an animal something and then once they've eaten it and processed it and it stays in their stomach, um, you then cook it or you know start to use it in your food that you're going to consume and then you'll actually be able to get benefit by the food that they've eaten and is actually in their stomach so an example is like you feed them really really high iron source um, food and then you actually get that benefit of the process and the development that's happened within the insect's stomach and then when you consume it you'll get even more benefit because it's already going on through a first layer of processing so it's something that they're talking a little bit more about in the edible insect space and where things could be heading with edible insects. So that's something that I would be really interested in knowing more about. And if anyone out there does have any um, thoughts on what they could feed their crickets to gut load them, to get a benefit out of eating them. And this is for human consumption. It's not just for the pet market. Um, and you probably wouldn't want to waste your time on it as well. But if there is a food that could be particularly benefit by being processed by a cricket first or by an insect that might hold some benefit for us humans. That could be a really, really interesting topic. So definitely keep your eye out for, yeah, maybe trying something new on your farm. Um, we're gonna be trying some stuff here. Not really sure what we're gonna try yet, but yeah, that could be huge for the industry and yeah, crickets just keep getting better and better for human consumption, that's for sure. Okay, that is everything that we have for food and water with the crickets. Um, 
Just in summary, so you've seen how we actually process all our food now and then also what we do for our water and the reason why we feed them the grain diet and then also the reason why we have oranges, that's because of the vitamin C. And then finally, we just talked about the gut loading stuff which we just mentioned. So all that stuff is really, really important. Um, and then making sure your crickets and the actual containers that they're in are as clean as possible. So all the food doesn't have any mold on it, doesn't have any feces or frass on it. That's super important. And then also having enough food so your crickets don't eat each other. Those, all those topics are really, really important for growing healthy and happy crickets. That's everything for this video. Thank you for tuning in. If you do have any questions and if you have any thoughts about that gut loading stuff and you want to try it, let me know how it goes. Um, I'll be letting you know how things go on the farm here and see if we can notice a taste difference when we do some gut loading stuff with the crickets. Um, but yeah, if you do have any thoughts um, on those topics that we talked about already or if you have any questions about what you can actually feed your crickets, and yeah just leave it below i'll get to all the answers and yeah thank you once again for supporting the channel couldn't do it without you guys um, we're learning so much together with farming crickets and everyone in the community that we've slowly been growing has been super helpful so it's greatly appreciated just listen to how happy these guys are in here really really positive to see teenagers going good down there consuming so yeah, um, we will see you in the next video and have a great time and good luck with your crickets back at home. Bye.